But what I really want to show you guys is that I've already went through this process of setting up textures and brushes for many different styles of textures such as wood, stones, and textiles. So painting with wood gives you this really, really nice effect here. And then I'm gonna scale up so you guys can see. It's this really, really nice kind of uh, wood grain um, texturing feel that you can add to your illustrations. Have you ever wondered how you can add a little bit more life to your illustrations? Maybe it's adding a little bit more light and shadows, but also maybe it's adding a little bit more of detail textured into your work. And that's exactly what we are going to talk about in this video. I'm going to take you through how to build a custom texture that you'll be able to add to your illustrations and add more life and more character to your artwork. My name is Leo and you're watching Ghost Paper, so now let's get to it. All right, now that we're here in Procreate, this is one of my latest illustrations. And although it had some some nice lighting effect coming from the right side that has a little bit of texture applied to it. There's, there's not a lot of texture applied to this character itself. Although the outlines were created with a brush that I highly recommend you guys to try it out. Uh, I have it in one of my favorites and it does come with Procreate 5, which is the Ink Bleed uh, brush. And that's the one that I'm using here on this illustration for the outlines. But as you can see on the inside shapes of my character, there's not a lot of texture and that's exactly a great opportunity here for us to actually add more life by adding texture to this illustration. So the very first thing that you're going to need here is a photo, a high quality texture file for us to be able to create a brush. So in this case here, we're going to be creating a textile brush and something that kind of looks like denim, something that kind of looks like jeans. So first, as I said before, you, you, you will need to have a high quality photo of the texture that you need. So it does require you having a camera, you can use your cell phone to in order to get that photo, but it's important for you to try to get a crisp, high quality photo of that texture. Then you can either use Photoshop or even Procreate in order to get to step two. So all that you have to do is to import the photo into Procreate and then you're going to desaturate that photo. So I'll show you guys what we need to do here actually. So I'm going to go into my pictures folder, I'm going to, uh, can I do this by holding? Guess not, so I'm just going to tap on the little arrow there and I'm gonna send it to Procreate. And I believe Procreate is going to create a new file with that illustration. So here we go, it's importing. And if I go back into the gallery, maybe that will be as a new file and it is right here. So once you import your photo into Procreate, it's probably not gonna be black and white as this. This has already been treated. I'm just going to show you guys the steps that you need to follow. So you're going to import that photo onto Procreate, and then we're gonna go into the adjustments menu, go into hue, saturation, brightness, take down all of the saturation, and if needed, you can tweak the brightness a little bit. But what I, will, I would actually recommend is after you take down the saturation, go back into the adjustments and go into curves. And here in the curves is where you actually want to crush the values. So by creating, you know, raising the whites and lowering the blacks, you actually want to create something like this. Uh, in fact, sorry, instead of being on the blue channel, I'm just gonna reset this once again. You wanna be in the gamma section. So in the gamma section, raise the whites, lower the blacks, and crush this illustration, crush this photo, so that it becomes uh, better for you to apply it as a texture. So if things don't look quite realistic because you're crushing the value, so we're making the darks darker and the whites brighter, that's actually what we want because this is going to be applied as a texture. So it goes in a separate layer on top of your illustration, so the more that is actually visible right here is actually better. You don't need to go, uh, please don't do it like something like, um, you know, when you go to an extreme, something like this, for example, and you start losing the differences between uh, whites and blacks, and then you start kind of crushing it going too far. So you definitely want to establish something that looks more or less like this. So once you're done, all that you have to do here, we're going to go into the actions menu, and then let's go into share. And let's just click here for now as a PNG file. And now that we've uh, tapped as PNG, all that we have to do is just hit copy. 
because we're just going to send this into the memory of the iPad. So now let's go back into our illustration, the one that we were just working on in terms of adding more texture to it. And now back in here in the brush library, I'm just going to create a new brush. So I'm just gonna leave it, maybe I'll do it in the favorite so it's a little easier for me to locate this new brush. We're just gonna tap the plus icon here on the top right and create a new uh, brush. So this is our new brush and now the Brush Studio actually works in a very, very simple way, which basically is uh, a shape that guides or basically drives your brush. So if this is a circle, that's how the shape of this brush will be. And then you have the grain. The grain source is the texturing material applied to this brush. And that's exactly where we want to insert our photo or our treated texture. So we're going to click Edit and then we're going to click on or tap on import and now we're going to hit paste and we're just pasting from the memory of the iPad that image that we just treated. So now that we have this texture you could say that we are done so you could click done and then going back here on the uh, brush itself you would think that our job is done but as you can see there are certain, uh, certainly some very visible lines and that's called the tiling. And tiling basically is Procreate actually pasting or repeating this texture over and over to every side up and down in all sides of this square. So what's actually happening here is we probably have a very dark bottom of this image as well as a bright top section and Procreate is not really able or when it's tiling it doesn't really know that this needs to be blended a little better. However, there is a, a, a way to actually achieve this and that's what we're going to do here next. So let's just hit edit on our grain source, on our grain editor, and we're going to hit this uh, button here, auto repeat. And now that we have this, this is the beauty of Procreate. It also gives you a helper in terms of actually establishing a tileable texture. So all of these steps, you can also do them in Photoshop or in another raster or pixel program, but you actually need to understand a little bit better how to create tiling images or tileable images. And that's a whole other tutorial that I won't be able to get into in this video. I wanna keep it short and I wanna be able to talk more about how to bring more life into your illustrations. So now that we've created or tapped on auto repeat, you have the option of grain scale. So we can increase the scale here and that actually makes a little bit better already. So we're gonna leave it about 2.2. There's the border overlap which is the amount of blending that's happening on all sides of our texture. I could go all the way down, but then you definitely feel these lines both horizontally and vertically. So I'm gonna leave it about max to be completely honest. Then there's mirror overlap, which as the name says, is going to be mirroring the pixels like perfectly between all of the sides of your, of your square. But in this case right here, I mean, if we were doing such as a, something like a grain kind of texture, I'm sure that the mirror overlap would be a great feature, but because it's very visible, you can kind of see how it's actually mirroring in a very perfect way. We actually want to turn this off. And then on rotation, this could be something interesting. You might want something that's kind of like on a 45 degree angle of your texture. I highly actually recommend you guys to play with angles for your texturing for like some of the wood texturing and other materials. But because this is a textile material, we're just gonna keep it vertically. And then finally, there's mask hardness, which is another feature you may actually want to play around. In fact, I don't think it looks uh, too bad if there is a little bit of hardness, hardness to our blending, but I think that I'll leave somewhere in between or uh, this is one of those like hard judgment kind of calls and you definitely want to play around with this a little bit more. So now that we have this, um, then I'm going to finally hit done. And now Procreate is actually processing that information. It's creating our texture. And once you look here on the result, already looks much, much better without a lot of those seams that we were just uh, looking at, those lines, those hard lines that we were seeing before. The last thing that I want to talk to you guys about so, you know, I was just talking about shape and grain. One thing that I forgot to set up here is that right now, this is also a preference, but right now our shape source is a very perfect circle with no feathering. So what's actually happening here is that if you were to paint a certain element, you would actually have a very good edge 
But for brushes like this, I actually prefer to have more feathering to the shape source. And this is very simple to achieve. We just have to hit edit. We're gonna go on import, but now we're going to choose something for, from the brush library itself. These are all shapes that come with Procreate. And we're going to choose the soft one. And now uh, this is just applied. We're gonna hit done. And now we have a brush that has feathering to the outer edges of the, uh, of the stroke. And finally, if we go into properties, we're just going to increase the maximum size here because right now uh, this, is, this is a texturing brush. So I think that we need something, I'm um, going to say maybe 350 as uh, the maximum size. And I know that I can keep tweaking this. I can still see there, there are some like brighter areas. But once again, for the purposes of this video, I just wanna achieve something rather uh, as quick as possible here. So we're gonna hit done. And here's our first custom created texture brush. I haven't really given a name, but you can always go back here into the brush studio and the, in the about section, you can just click here and call it denim one. And I'm also gonna call it test. So I know that this is my test brush and we're gonna hit done and here's our brush. So now back into our illustration, I already have a layer here that I've created to test some things. And I also have a mask that I've created just on the silhouette of this character. So I'm just gonna tap select and make sure that I have a selection on my new layer. And now with, with my new brush, I'm going to increase the size a little bit of my brush. I'm just gonna start painting. And as you can see, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here so you guys can definitely see what's happening. I have this really nice textural, textural effect happening on this character. And I think there's still a little bit of tiling happening here and that's where you need to keep tweaking things. So I'll show you guys what you have to do. Uh, we have to go back into the brush itself. We're gonna go back into the grain source and hit edit. And now we do have to click on auto repeat and we have to keep doing this until we have something that looks better. So I'm going to increase scale once again. So now we are about, um, I maybe we can pull this off with uh, something like 1.8. So I'm gonna leave it like this, hit done, and that will actually increase the footprint of our texture. So we will look kind of bigger, but what you can do here is on scale, you can reduce scale if necessary. But what I really wanna show you guys is that I've already went through this process of setting up textures and brushes for many different styles of textures such as wood. There's a full list of wood brushes I'm just gonna uh, show you guys one. So for example, I have wood grain and I have the same kind of texturing, this kind of effect, you have it for brighter sections. So when you're painting on brighter colors or when you're painting for darker colors. Uh, and I just wanna show you what it looks like. So painting with wood gives you this really, really nice effect here that I'm just painting on all of our character and then I'm gonna scale up so you guys can see. It's this really, really nice kind of uh, wood grain um, texturing feel that you can add to your illustrations. So there's several different kinds of wood grain. Then we have seven, se several different kinds of stones, such as scratches, rough roughness up from rocks, porous rocks. Uh, there's uh, many, many kinds here. And then there's also a lot of options when it comes to textiles including our denim filter. So I'm just going to delete this layer, create a new one, make a selection and go on our new layer, set it to overlay so that it already looks cool. And now I'm going to use that denim layer and paint on our character. And this is the result. It looks super cool. And it's really, it, it doesn't like jump um, you know, it doesn't jump crazy out of your illustration, but when you zoom in, someone will be able to take a look and say, wow, this looks really, really cool. There's some extra detail when I look closely to this image. So all of these brushes, there are 47 brushes. I'm going to leave the link in the description. This is on my Gumroad page. And I did take the time to set one by one of these brushes. Again, there's many brushes with the uh, with the uh, inverted version and the normal version, which just actually works better if you're painting on a bright surface on or, or on a dark surface. 
and you have textiles, stones, and wood. And I really wanted to show you guys how you can keep adding details to your illustration. So by the time that you post it online, these things have some amazing character and just like visuals that will be quite striking when you compare to their flat original versions. So that's it for this video guys, hope you guys enjoyed and if you did a like would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these tips and tricks, reviews and speed paint videos and that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator every day. Again if you're interested in checking out these brushes the link will be in the description box down below, it's about 47 custom detail brushes that I've created for you guys to add more life to your illustrations in Procreate. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.